Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for this workshop for the Illuminate Hackathon. Uh, today, we're very lucky to be joined by Stephen Fluin from Axlar. And Axlar, uh, you're probably very familiar with because uh, we did a hackathon uh, with Axlar uh, and uh, uh, a couple others uh, very recently. That was the DevPost hackathon. Um, and uh, But just to recap, um, Axlar is the universal overlay network. Uh, they provide secure cross-chain communication for Web3. Axlar is built on proof of stake. Uh, it is a battle-tested approach, uh, and Axlar uh, communication works between many different blockchains. Um, so in this workshop, uh, Stephen will tell you about, uh, he'll walk you through the Axlar network uh, and the services uh, that you can use to help build uh, your cross-chain dApp. So with that, I'll hand it over to you, Stephen. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kevin. I'm, I'm really happy to be here. Uh, as, as you said, uh, this is a very kind of exciting space with lots of going on. Um, and we were really happy to participate in the last hackathon, and we're, we're happy to be back here. Um, so I'm going to cover a lot of what was covered uh, last time, but I, I'm going to cover it in a little bit of a different way. And one of the things that I really think is important is really kind of uh, understanding the context. So I'll be going into that uh, a little bit as well. So uh, let's, without further ado, let's kind of dive in. So uh, if you don't know me, my name is Stephen Fluin. I am the head of developer relations for XLR. Uh, I was previously at companies like Google. I was previously at Chainlink Labs. Uh, and the, the reason I'm really, really excited about uh, this space is because uh, we actually have a huge problem in blockchain today, which is that it is becoming harder and harder to become a successful developer here, right? Like if you joined the industry three or four years ago, there were very few choices, there were very few tools. And so it was actually a much simpler path to follow. Um, but what's happened is as more and more players have entered, as the ecosystem has gotten more and more complex, it's actually become harder and harder to be a new entrant to become successful here. And so that's one of the reasons I'm really excited about Axelar is uh, we're working on simplifying that. Um, and so if you've never worked with anyone from developer relations before, uh, my job really has two parts. Uh, the first part is really to focus on helping you be successful. Uh, and then the second part is really empathizing and understanding what it's like uh, on the other side of the screen, like sitting in your chair, sitting at your keyboard, what are the challenges that you're going to face? What are the problems uh, that you're hitting? What are things that you think about? How can we make that better um, as we continue to evolve uh, what we're doing as well? And to, to really epitomize the, this problem of developer experience, uh, I want to show a brief timeline of uh, what uh, is actually transpired here. And so uh, we'll, we'll go through this in a few different parts, but uh, we'll go with, through why XR, XR, some of the features, uh, some of the tools, and I'll actually do a, a live code walkthrough. So uh, really to understand why, why XLR exists, um, I want to show this timeline. And back 2009, 2017, there, there were very few different chains out there, right? Like there were a, a few and there were just major ones, right? Everyone was choosing the same chains for the same reasons. Um, but what we saw in 2017 to 2020 was this kind of explosion of L1s, uh, the start of L2s, those sorts of things. And as we look forward into 2023 and beyond, uh, we're seeing more and more and more chains coming out. Uh, a lot of these are bespoke, right? They're, they're a chain that is built for a purpose, for an application. Um, and this is in a lot of ways a good thing, right? You can, when you build your own blockchain, you can balance all of the needs. You can balance the trade-offs that your developers need, that your users need, all, all these sorts of things. But fundamentally, this is challenging for developers, right? This is a harder space to live in. And so when you think about Axelar and why we exist, uh, it really comes down to trying to make this process simpler, make uh, your ability to build and ship code that makes users successful simpler and easier. So when, when we think about the way that uh, the approach that Axlar uses to do this, um, it really is built on kind of four key principles. Uh, first is being secure and decentralized. Uh, so Axlar is a blockchain um, built on decentralized consensus. Uh, it's kind of a, an open network, so people can come in, they can, you can build your own validators, you can run your own nodes, all those sorts of things. Um, and one of the things that, that Axlar has really been doing that I've loved to see is this focus on security, right? Like we hear a lot about bridges and compromises and things like that. And so starting day one is saying, hey, we're not going to try and ship fast. We're going to try and ship right. So focus on security. Um, and we from that, when you see this kind of network continuing to grow, you, you see a lot of different network effects. And the kind of the magic here is that uh, every time a new chain gets added to Axlar network, whether that's Cosmos chain, whether that's an EVM chain, uh, or potentially other types of chains in the future or chain classes in the future, um, there's this, this magical network effect where now every chain that is able to access the XLR network is now more valuable because it has this communication channel to all the other chains. 
Um, we really focused on the idea of simple integration. So how simple can we make these APIs for sending and receiving messages and tokens and things like that? Um, because at the end of the day, we want to enable these one-click experiences for users uh, that are kind of magical. Um, when you think about Axelor, you can think about this idea of an interoperability network. So it is trying to be a network that powers and connects these chains. So that when you're building an application, you don't necessarily have to think as much about the old way of doing things where I start on one chain and then I deploy that same contract to a bunch of chains. How do I keep them in sync? How do I coordinate between them? How do I share liquidity? All those sorts of things. Um, we really want to get to a world where we have these chain agnostic dApps, where you can build an, a dApp that then has access easy, like built in from the start access to other chains, to other instances, other manifestations, other endpoints of your own dApp uh, to empower things like asset transfers or really any idea that you can come up with this idea of, of message passing where you can call contracts that exist on other blockchains uh, almost kind of uh, natively as part of the way that you build your dApp. Um, one of my, my favorite visualizations, if you want to really understand the XLR network as it is today, uh, is on xlrscan.io, uh, where there's a real-time visualization of all the transactions on the network, uh, as well as all of the chains that are integrated. And so that's that's the last, um, best place to see what are the latest status of the chains, uh, what messages are passing where, and really understand the, the kind of interconnected state that we've achieved so far, and to can really continue to watch it as it evolves. So there's, there's lots and lots of use cases. And, and this is actually one of the most interesting things that, that I've seen uh, in my, my time in crypto is that a lot of developers are really excited about being here, but they're not really sure what to build. And so what I really want to inspire you to, to start thinking about is um, if we think through 2023 and we think through 2025 and 2030 and the, the future of, of blockchain, um, we have this, this world where we're going to have more uh, blockchains, app dedicated blockchains, all these sorts of things. How can you build programs and dApps that live and are native to that world. And that, that's really a big challenge because uh, this is gonna affect everything we do from NFTs, DeFi, uh, DEXs, how do you think about liquidity, all these sorts of things. Um, and in particular, gaming is, is one that I think is really, really interesting because uh, you see all of these dedicated blockchains for individual blockchain games uh, that have all your items and equipment and things like that. But if all those items and equipment are locked into that blockchain, you, you really haven't achieved the level of portability I think they, these games want to achieve. And so how can we build games more natively chain agnostic? And so I really think the future is exciting. And I think we don't even know what we're going to, uh, the problems we're going to be solving yet um, beyond just a, a lot of the existing use cases. And so if you have ideas and your things you're excited about, uh, you should definitely reach out to me um, or you should come to, uh, we're actually running a summit in February uh, that we're, we're inviting a lot of builders to called the Interop Summit, which you can, should come and check out and come and talk to us. Uh, we're going to be running hackathons. We're going to be running uh, pitch competitions and things like this. So, so even just the kernel of an idea, I think, can spark entirely new industries. Um, so I want to cover just the, the tech stack of Axelar and what it feels like for, for a developer. Uh, first of all, I'll start at a high level and we'll go a lot deeper into the, the APIs and things like that in a little bit. Um, but at, at one end of the, the network, you've got all these applications. So you're going to be building applications and shipping those applications on blockchains uh, via your smart contracts, whether that's Moonbeam or, or whatever or blockchain you want, you want to be interacting with. Um, and then what you're going to see is that on these EVM chains, uh, you're going to see gateways. And those, those gateways really form uh, the place on the blockchain that is going to be offering that API. So this is the contract that's going to be calling you when, we're, when you're receiving a message. It's going to be the uh, contract that you're going to be interacting with when you want to send a message or, or send tokens. Um, what happens is the, the Axelon network, this blockchain, is watching and monitoring all of those gateways and interacting with those gateways in order to uh, facilitate the sending and receiving of all these messages. So let's let's dive now into some of the features. So what does it actually feel like to be a developer that's interacting with the XLR network? Um, and so I, I really want to categorize it into kind of two main categories uh, of use cases today. Uh, so the first is sending tokens. So this is something that the people have been doing for for a while. This is a very well understood. Um, you've got kind of this EVM to EVM world that, that a lot of people uh, are thinking about. Uh, but then you also have Cosmos to Cosmos, where we've got IBC, which has its own kind of limitations, um, and we're trying to to help with that. Uh, but then you've also got this idea of how can we cross different uh, classes of chains when you've got like a Cosmos chain, when you've got an EVM chain, how can you you interact with all those things? And this is what Axelar um, is really kind of the, the bread and butter, butter in the past of Axelar was some of the first features that we shipped. Um, but then you've got this kind of new frontier of what if you open that up to be any message? So uh, any contract call across any chain, that, that's the world that we want to live in where that's where you're building really, really uh, powerful chain agnostic dApps. Um, so today uh, we have this generalized message passing between EVM chains um, and more is coming in the future. 
Um, from an interface standpoint, when you actually want to interact, uh, there's kind of two ways to do it. So um, you're going to be accessing the network via APIs. Um, so either directly uh, via the kind of RPC and hitting nodes. Uh, also, we have an SDK that can uh, uh, abstract some of this, make it a little bit simpler. Uh, or you can be interacting directly with these gateways if you're doing things like message passing. And so we'll, we'll go through each of these um, and we'll, we'll both look at an example. So let's up, start off talking about that SDK that I mentioned. So this is a wrapper around uh, interacting with the, the network itself. So uh, you can see that we've got, uh, it's basically a JavaScript package. You can download it from NPM uh, and it wraps services and makes it easier to interact with XLR. Um, and so there's kind of three main APIs that I'll talk about. So the first is the XLR asset transfer object uh, that you can instantiate and then you can get deposit address and I'll, I'll go through a code example. Uh, and then we've got a lot of these methods that are really just for understanding what's going on within XLR. So you can query, you can look things up um, by these helper methods. Um, and so the first and probably the most important one on the sending token side of things uh, is this method called get deposit address. So this is, as you can see, uh, a property or a function on XLR asset transfer object. So you just give it an environment uh, and then you can ask for a deposit address. And what will happen is this will basically ask the network to create an address that whenever tokens are sent to that address, they will be forwarded according to this channel that you're setting up. So when you call get deposit address, you're effectively defining a channel across blockchains. Here's my source chain, here's my destination, here's where I want it to go in the destination, and here's what I'm sending. And then anything you put onto one side of that channel is gonna automatically flow to and be forwarded to that other side of the channel. Um, and this is actually a very, very powerful in, in magic in a couple of ways because it generates that source chain address and automatically forwards things. And it's, it's powerful in that you don't actually need an intermediate wallet. So let's say you wanted to, for example, uh, withdraw some token from a DEX. You could generate a uh, deposit address and then extract from that DEX directly to that deposit address and it would automatically be forwarded to the chain of your choice. And so you don't need to deal with intermediate wallets. You don't have to deal with this intermediate custody. It kind of just solves the end-to-end -end problem for you. Um, the other th side of this is really querying and recovery tools. Um, so I'll just uh, give one example here. So basically you can ask the SDK to query your transaction status. So um, because this is actually a very, very complicated process. So let, let's imagine that you want to uh, interact with a DEX on one chain and you want to interact with a, a deposit address on another chain in maybe a, a different asset type, right? You, you want to do a, some sort of swap. Um, that's a very, very complicated thing with involving multiple transactions on multiple blockchains, uh, as well as the, the bridging and the, the uh, passing between the chains of those tokens. And so it can be hard to really understand what's going on. And so that's why we're trying to create some of these methods. Um, and a lot of this is visualized on Axler Scan, which uh, I definitely recommend you check out. So as you're playing with these things, take a look at the Axler Scan transactions, and it will give you this kind of end-to-end -end visualization of what happened on the source chain, what happened on the destination chain, and what's happening in the middle. So that's that's the SDK set of things, which is really focused on uh, understanding what's going on, as well as this, this ability to send tokens. Um, but the piece that I'm really excited about, and I think is going to be defining the future of cross-chain, uh, is more general message passing. And so this idea that any problem that you want to solve, you can solve it in a cross-chain or chain agnostic manner. Um, so you're going to hear this called GMP throughout uh, everything we talk about today. Uh, the simplest manifestation of this is just a call contract method. And so uh, what you do is you're going to deploy a smart contract to a source chain and to a destination chain. On the source chain, you need a call con you're going to call the call contract method with a couple properties. You're going to have the destination chain, the destination address, and whatever binary ABI encoded payload you want. And then on the destination chain, you implement the interface and you override this execute method. On um, that execute method tells you the source chain, where the message came from, the source address, which uh, on the source chain, as well as that binary payload data. That's really anything that an ABI can represent. Um, and so these very, very simple, very complementary uh, methods are the two that you need to really build any powerful cross-chain DAP. And if you look at it a little bit behind the scenes in terms of how does this work, um, you've got the source chain, you've got your app logic, um, and then you're going to call this contract method. Um, what will happen is that's a method on the Axelor gateway. And so uh, when that is registered on the Axelor gateway, the Axelor network will then, this, this uh, decentralized blockchain, will notice that that has uh, occurred on the gateway. It will then interact with the Axelor gateway. It will mark that payload as approved. Um, and then if you've interacted with a gas service, which I'll, I'll talk about in a little bit before, it will actually do the execution on the destination chain. Um, so it's kind of this, this kind of automatic magic uh, flow that is decentralized, that is uh, transparent to uh, everyone. 
So I, I mentioned this idea of a guest service because one of the challenges when you want to do this generalized message passing concept is that you've got gas that you have to pay on the source chain to execute the transaction. Transaction. You need to uh, incentivize the, the validators, the, the relays, all, all these intermediates uh, in a decentralized, trust-minimized manner. And then you actually need to pay for the gas on the destination chain. And so you can do this yourself. You can spin up your own relayers and things like that. Um, but if you want to, you can actually use this gas service. And what that will allow you to do is you can pay in uh, different ways that you want to, but you can pay, for example, in your native gas on the source chain for the entire end-to-end -end transaction. Uh, and this is something that really, really simplifies things for developers, where I pay for an end-to-end -end transaction in one place, and then I just know that that end-to-end uh, -end transaction is going to happen. And so uh, there's actually several steps to this process. So uh, you pay the native gas for the, the call. It, it gives you an estimate of based on source chain, destination chain, how much that's going to cost. Um, and then what happens is uh, that money will actually be used at each of the steps. Uh, and then if there's any left over, it'll actually get refunded to you. And so uh, it's a very, very transparent, uh, fantastic way from a developer experience standpoint to actually make sure that this transaction is working end to end. Um, and so we, we talked about this, this idea of call contract, uh, having a source and a destination. There's also another version of this called con call contract with token. Um, because one of the things that we see happening a lot is that uh, you don't just want to send a general message, uh, but oftentimes to build really cool applications in DeFi um, and in other use cases, uh, you want to send a token along with that transaction. So not just sending a token, not just sending a message, but kind of doing both at the same time. Um, and so then there, there's a couple extra steps that we'll take a look at uh, that allow you to do that. So if this has seemed interesting, if those are the features that are solving the problems you want for the, this kind of future-proofed cross-chain dApps that you're looking to build, uh, there's a few tools that I'll point you to to get you started. Um, and then we'll do a, a full uh, walkthrough of, of our code samples and things like that. So um, we have uh, this number one tool that I'm going to point you to is called uh, GMP examples or Axelar local GMP examples. Um, and what this is, is this is really the go-to uh, starter kit that will uh, start your cross-chain DAP development journey. It's got code samples. It's got hard hat setup. I'll, I'll, I'll explain that a lot more. Um, within that and reference from there, uh, is actually this thing called our, our local dev environment. So the actual our local dev environment. Um, what this is, is this is uh, built on top of Ganache and it basically just automates the entire process of setting up this very, very complex universe of multiple chains, uh, multiple nodes, all the gateway contracts, all the relayers, all those sorts of things. Uh, and it, it does it all for you, which is, is fantastic. Um, Obviously, we've got the, the SDK, which I talked about, uh, which really abstracts and wraps and makes it easy to interact with the XR network. Uh, we've also got Docs, YouTube, Discord. There, there's lots of ways. If, if you're looking to get help, come and join the community. Come and chat with us. Uh, there's lots of people uh, around who, who want to help out. So I'm going to dive in um, and just give a brief overview of these, and then I'm going to actually show you all of these tools. So uh, the first that I talked about was the, the GMP example. So you can check that out. Uh, bit.ly slash GMP start is a short link that I created that should work. Um, this is really your starter kit. So this has uh, all the examples you need in terms of JavaScript code, uh, like your node code that you're going to be running to deploy your contracts, to execute them, all those sorts of things. Um, also the contracts themselves for sending and receiving all those capabilities. Uh, and the kind of magic thing here is that all of these examples, all of this code, it supports both local development via that environment that I, I mentioned. I'll talk about it in a little bit more, uh, as well as you can actually use uh, the real test nets for this, which is kind of fantastic. And so under the hood within that local uh, GMP examples project, you're going to see uh, uses hard hat to manage all, and deploy all the contracts and execute all the scripts. Uh, it's got the Axelar SDK, uh, JavaScript SDK built into it. It's got a local dev environment, and it even has a Next.js uh, fully implemented web interface if you wanted to really understand all the way back to the front and what it's like to build these dApps. Uh, I mentioned that that local dev environment, it's built on, on Ganache. Uh, it spins up a whole bunch of local chains, which really makes uh, testing much easier. Um, it does all the work to deploy the gateway contracts, the gas services, all those sorts of things. Um, and it really kind of simulates the XLR network. So you don't have to worry about uh, relying on a real test net where uh, everything costs gas uh, and everything takes a lot of time and you have to worry to worry about finality and all those sorts of things. Um, this is a, a much simpler, much faster local environment. So what I want to do now is I actually want to dive into that uh, local example uh, GMP uh, repository and actually show off some of the things that it can do and what it feels like to be building. So this walkthrough, we're going to go through the, the GMP examples uh, with that that I uh, URL that I referenced. I'll actually spin up a local dev environment. We'll send and receive messages. We'll send and receive messages with a token. Uh, and then I want to show you those example UIs that are built in uh, Next.js. So let's go ahead and dive over into coding. And so uh, as you can see here, I have already cloned the repo. 
And so this is just the standard repo for the uh, Axelar local GMP examples repo. Um, and there is a lot in here. So uh, the two places I'll point you is so we've got a fantastic readme at the very, very root that is going to walk you through this. And we'll actually go through some of this right now. Um, but then also in each of the examples uh, web, you'll see a readme that tells you exactly how to use that example. And so let's go ahead and start following some of this repository. So the first thing we want to do is let's just send a message from one chain to another chain on a local environment. Um, and so we've already cloned this repo. We've already installed our dependencies. Um, and we've already uh, created an environment file with a private key. Um, and so what we're going to be able to do now that we've done that, the precursor setup, is I'm literally just going to run node script slash create local. And what this should do, this is actually going to create that and run and execute that local dev environment. And so what you're going to see is we have now spun up a bunch of Ganache nodes. Uh, we've created a Moonbeam with chain ID of 2,500. We've deployed our uh, address deployer, we've deployed the gateway, we've deployed the gas receiver, all these sorts of things, we've deployed tokens. Um, and so this is really all you need to get started developing a cross-chain dApp uh, that emulates what you're gonna see in test nets and what you're gonna see in the, the real world here. Um, you can see we've got all these uh, deployment addresses. Um, those deployment addresses, you can also see them here in our JSON. So uh, every time you spin up the test net, it's gonna create new addresses. And so then you're gonna be able to see all of those in the test net JSON file. They'll just be tracked automatically. So you can refer to them programmatically within your application. Um, and then the second thing that we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna, there's a bunch of different examples that you can take a look at. And so there's uh, a, yeah, as I said, there's, there's variables available and then there's also uh, scripts that you can run. So we can, for example, run this uh, call contract so I mentioned about generalized message passing. So call contract is uh, our simplest example that lets you send a message from one chain to another. So if we look in the examples folder here, uh, you're going to see here is the smart contract. So this is uh, executable example .soul. Uh, and what we've done is we've made this a single contract that you can deploy on every chain. And so it's got both the sending method as well as the receive method. So you've got this set remote me uh, value method, which calls call contract. Uh, on our gateway. And so you can see that this uh, is already integrated with the gateway from the variables, um, but then also the it has the execute method, which is the receive method that you get when you inter, uh, implement the Axel, our executable interface. Um, and so let's go ahead and actually uh, deploy and run this example. And so we're going to do this in two steps. Uh, so if you look back in the readme, you're going to be doing both the deployment. So we'll do, say uh, we'll use a different terminal window for this. And what we will do is we will node scripts deploy examples, and we'll just pass in the call contract example. And we're going to say local. As, as I said, you could actually deploy this uh, directly to a testnet. Um, we want to keep it simple here. So uh, we've now deployed that solidity contract. Um, and now let's go ahead and run our test method. So if so you take a look right next to this, you can see index.js. You can see here's our deploy method. Um, and then you can also see here's our test method um, that's going to find a chain. Uh, and send a message to the next chain via that that uh, sender and receiver pair and the XLR network. So let's go ahead and run node scripts uh, test. This time instead of deploy, and we'll say examples call contract. And let's go ahead and try something different. Let's try and go from, uh, let's go Moonbeam to Phantom. I think this should work uh, on local. Oh, it's just a, just a typo in uh, Moonbeam. Yep. I, I often get the capitalization wrong, so we'll see if that's correct. There we go. So we've initiated a transaction on Moonbeam, and then we've sent it to Phantom. You can see the value of the smart contract before we initiated was blank. Uh, and now we've got Hello Phantom from Moonbeam. So if you're building and deploying a large giant dApp on Moonbeam, and then you want to uh, kind of have that application interact with other chains, influence other chains, uh, have these satellite apps or, or uh, kind of paired dApps, you can do that. And uh, with this really, really simple example, we saw how we can pass a string uh, via that call contract method. So I'm going to jump over to uh, a little bit more of a complicated example. And thank you so much for the help, Kevin. I appreciate calling out my typos. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to jump into a different folder of our repository here. So we're going to go into the example web folder. And so uh, examples, we have all the smart contracts, we've got all the JavaScript that you need to deploy and interact with these contracts. 
Um, but the magic of Examples Web is that we actually have full web interfaces built for you. And so I'm going to go into that call contract. So uh, this is a very, very similar piece to what we just saw. Um, but instead of being purely in the JavaScript in the terminal layer, we're actually going to get a, a UI to interact with these contracts. And so um, I've already copied the dev environment. And so let's go ahead and uh, spin up the uh, terminal, uh, spin up our local dev environment, build and deploy. So we'll kill this. And then what we're going to do is, I'll just put this over here for a sec. We're going to run yarn local dev. That should spin up a local dev environment. Again, it's it's spinning up all the chains that we need to run this example. And then we're going to jump over into another terminal window. And then we're going to run yarn contracts build to compile our Solidity code and yarn contracts deploy. This is going to build our Solidity code from the examples and deploy them to the chains that we just spun up. And now if we want to see our web interface, we're going to run yarn dev. So this is just an XJS pro project. Uh, and so we should be able to see this here in just a moment. All right, I think this has worked. So uh, this is the interface, so you can actually go, uh, all this code is open source and part of the repository. So you can see it's a full kind of self-contained project. It's got its own package JSON. Um, you could just go and copy this example wherever you needed to. Uh, you can see it's got components for kind of this, some of this general UI, and then it's got the contracts uh, that it's deploying here. And so the magic here is I can say, hello world, and I can hit send. And what will happen is that will be sent via the network. And then we, when we check the value on the receiver uh, chain, we will see that value. Um, and so really, this is really intended to just get you fa started as fast as possible, give you as much code that you can just take and run with uh, as quickly as possible. And I, I want to do a similar thing. And I, I want to take a look at a little bit more complicated example, because I mentioned that we have this ability to send just uh, messages, so that could be any binary data, but we also have the ability to send tokens with those messages. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at call contract with token. And so we'll just CD into this example on both of these. Contract. Okay. Um, and the instructions are actually going to be the exact same, but we'll, we'll pull up that readme just to make sure that we're following along here. Um, and so we've already run yarn. We've already uh, copied our example uh, environment file. And so what I'll do is in one tab, I will just spin up the environment. So we'll just hit local dev start. It will spin up that local dev environment with all the chains, all the deployers, et cetera. And then we will also spin up our, uh, our build and deployer contracts. And then when we hit yarn dev, what we'll do is we'll spin up that uh, new Next.js project. Uh, but you'll see when we refresh here, we won't just have single message passing. Uh, we actually now are using message passing with a, a token transfer. And so what we can see here is uh, you've got your token sender, you've got your token receiver. So we're going from Avalanche to Moonbeam in this example. Um, let's go ahead and send uh, a thousand tokens. Um, and I could come up with a bunch of uh, EVM addresses, but in order to keep things simple, we can just generate a few random addresses. So we're gonna send a thousand tokens split among these four receivers. Um, and so I'm just gonna hit the send. That is uh, going ahead and submitting the transaction via the gateway, that uh, call contract with token. And then all of those uh, receiver addresses have now received uh, the token. So it's the token amount that you sent uh, minus a, a little bit of the, the fees and things like that. So if we take a look at the source code, um, we will really understand what's going on here. So uh, first, let's start to take a look at the contracts. So the contract for sending, uh, calling a contract with a token is a little bit more complex. So you're still going to see uh, the same uh, call contract with token method, which looks very similar. Um, but now, in addition to the destination chain address payload, uh, you're also going to see a symbol and amount. Um, just like we talked about a little bit before, um, because we want to pay for this transaction end to end, so paying the gas on the source chain, paying the gas on the destination chain, uh, we're calling pay native gas for, for contract call with token. Um, so this is basically just saying, hey, here's the, the message with token we want to send, uh, estimate the gas fees, and then uh, we'll pay for that. Um, and then we have a little bit more complexity here in that we can't just call uh, the call contract with token. We actually have to uh, transfer the con the um, the, the token and then approve it so that the gateway is actually able to burn that token um, so that the destination chain is able to mint it. 
So again, it's the, the complexity of moving tokens cross chain, uh, really abstracted as much as possible. Um, so you just have to make sure that you are transferring and authorizing that token uh, along with the message that you are sending. Um, and again, that payload that you send with that token can really be anything. It can be a string, it can be a destination address, anything that you want to send. Uh, as you can see here, we're actually taking that array of destination addresses and sending it. And what you'll see is that we're on the receiving end, splitting out that uh, destination addresses object into the array again, and then using that to split up the tokens that we're sending here. So uh, here we have the message receiver solidity contract. Um, and instead of the execute method, it's got an execute with token method uh, where you get the same uh, uh, source, source chain, source address, uh, payload, token, and amount are new. Um, and you can see here, we're decoding the payload into a list of addresses. And then we're using that to send uh, the total amount divided by the number of recipients to each of those addresses. And then we emit an executed, which our UI is picking up. And so you can see how quickly and easily it really is to, uh, you can build these kind of very complicated dApps that are communicating across chain, uh, doing very complicated things uh, with, with as little code as possible in the Solidity layer, uh, which is kind of a, the magic of Axelar and why I'm really excited about the, the network. So any questions about that demo? I know I, know I went very fast, um, seeing uh, awesome, very cool. Uh, we, ha we had a question around what type of NFT can you build on XLR? So uh, that is a really fantastic question. It, it kind of depends on what you want your NFT to do. Um, I, I think of NFTs as having different classes and uh, different kind of genres where there's there's artistic NFTs where maybe you just want that NFT to be burned on one chain and minted on another one so that you have uh, exactly one copy of the NFT. You could do that uh, by a general message passing. You could just pass all of the parameters for the NFT, the token URI, et cetera, um, you, along with some sort of confirmation that it was burned uh, to a destination chain. And then that destination chain would say, hey, now let's mint this NFT anew. So I would have a portable NFT, which could be valuable. Um, or you theoretically, you could have a NFT that actually lives across chains where um, maybe it's a dynamic NFT that changes over time. And you want to make sure when it changes on one chain, you're broadcasting that out and updating all of the corresponding NFT contracts on multiple chains. And so, yeah, you could have an NFT parent and a bunch of NFT babies. So uh, I, I was I was thinking about this last week of like, is there like some sort of crypto kitties where you like you need kitties from different chains? To, to come together to make new babies, things like that. I thought, I think some, an example like that might be really cool at some point in the future. All right, uh, were there any other questions uh, on these examples? Because I, I know I'm, I'm diving into the code. Uh, we're going pretty fast here. Um, so I, I understand that uh, it, you might need to sit and spend a little bit of time with the, the GMP examples to really understand uh, what's going on. But at the heart, it is really just uh, GMP is, is kind of fantastic in its simplicity, where you have a sender, a receiver with very, very similar method signatures. And then if you want to uh, pay for it end to end, use the gas service. So very, very simple. So let's go ahead and dive back here. And we'll do a, a final summary of some of the things we've talked about. So uh, Axelar, we're really trying to power this cross-chain future where uh, we're trying to bring simplicity where there hasn't been simplicity in the past, where uh, it's been a lot of work, it's been a lot of headache, you have to do a ton of worrying about security. Um, and I'm not saying you have to stop worrying about security. Uh, that's something I think every bridge and every uh, cross-chain dApp should be thinking about. Um, but at least at the, the network message passing layer, uh, we're taking care of everything for you. Um, you can send tokens, you can send messages, uh, and really the, the sky is the limit in terms of what that message passing unlocks for you. Uh, in terms of being able to build these very fantastic dApps that are going to power the future. Uh, and we've got a fantastic repository of examples for all that general message passing uh, to really help you move fast, give you code, give you the Next.js, give you the front end project that will get you started today uh, and moving quickly in the, the hackathon or whatever app you're building in the future. So I think that was it uh, in terms of the formal content. I'm happy to stick around and answer any questions. Uh, and I'm happy to hear uh, if this was helpful to you. Thank you so much, Stephen. That was amazing. Yeah, absolutely. So I uh, I do want to uh, just cover the um, uh, bounties really quickly, uh, if you don't mind. Um, so uh, just for everybody to know, uh, here's the link for uh, Axelar's bounties um, in the hackathon. And uh, they're very flexible and they're very open-ended. Um, so there are four prizes of $5,000 each. And uh, you can build anything that uses Axelar's general message passing. So... Uh, as Steven mentioned, you could build something where you have a swap uh, uh, on one chain and then the funds get sent to another one automatically via that deposit address. 
Uh, you could build a cross-chain NFT project. Uh, you could build uh, many other uh, different types of, of applications. And really, you know, that's incredible because uh, it's very flexible. It's open to you. We're not being prescriptive about saying that you need to build a, a very particular type of application. It's, it's really uh, up to you. And so uh, that's very, uh, you know, exciting to me. And, uh, you know, we're thrilled to, to have Axlar, you know, as part of the uh, Illuminate Hackathon. And we, we can't wait to see what you build. Yeah, it's going to be great. The, the sky's the limit. We, we've seen some fantastic dApps coming out of uh, the last few hackathons. And in terms of uh, questions or anything like that, oh, here we go. We have one more uh, from Ryan. Sure, uh, Ryan. So the question was, uh, is BNB enabled? Uh, the, the way that I would answer that question is, is always uh, go to Axler Scan. Um, so on Axler Scan, you're going to see all of the chains that, that we're currently integrated with, uh, whether that we, well, what we support. So for example, for example, uh, we don't have GMP, uh, generalized message passing on Cosmos chains yet. Um, I, I know BNB is a, an EVM chain. Just, just if you're wondering what status is, uh, definitely axlerscan.io, or if you check in our documentation, uh, we have the canonical reference for all of our uh, gateway addresses, gas receiver, or, uh, gas service addresses, all those sorts of things. Um, so docs.axlr.dev would be the place uh, if you're trying to look, find the, the contract addresses, uh, or axlr.scan.io would be the two places that point you to, to answer that question. Amazing. Thank you so much, Stephen. Awesome. Thanks for having me. All right. I think we are all set. So Kevin, um, tomorrow there is another session that is going to be happening with Layer Zero. And we're going to be uh, at the same here at um, Airme. It's going to be happening at 1800 UTC. So feel free to join us then. Other than that, have a happy hacking and we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much, everyone.